Okay, so Meta, I mean, uh, this cut takes us now below 2022 employment level. So we're, we're not just cutting last year's gains, but is this excitement warranted or is there more that we need to see on the growth side as well? Well, that's a great question, and thanks for having me on. I, I think that, that this company is going back to classic business 101, blocking and tackling, and they're cutting back on a bloated cost structure and an overly aggressive employee base because, as we all know, tech and Silicon Valley love to grow, and that's a good thing. And, and Meta has years of growth still ahead of it. I don't think its growth story is horribly impaired, but they're cutting way back on some of these visionary projects. It's, it's kind of the equivalent of in football throwing a – 60 yard bomb, which your odds of success are very low. And they've gone back to power, power sweep right and making four or five yards and Wall Street loves it. They love that they're gonna have higher margins and higher profitability because they're going back to basic business premises. So just to dig into that a little bit more, because you have reports today that Apple's delaying bonuses for some corporate divisions and expanding its cost cutting efforts too. The fact that we've seen these mega cap tech names rally uh, despite all the volatility and all the turmoil in the market more broadly in, in recent days, all the cost cutting, the focus on operating margins, this puts a floor on these stocks and they become attractive because of it? Well, as long as the numbers support that eventually, but a Apple's got to be potentially the greatest company the world's ever seen and, and also one of the best run companies the world has ever seen. And they're very no nonsense about their cost structure and, and their employee base and how they run their business. So I'm not surprised they're taking the right steps there. But we're, we're going to know in time what the margins look like going forward for these businesses and what kind of growth we get in the overall economic climate, both domestically here and around the world, because these are truly global businesses. And I, I think the verdict's out. But I, I do think that the severe downturn we got last year where the Nasdaq was down in the high 30s at the worst and the S&P was down in the mid to high 20s, we may have a floor there, but we're, we're going to have to wait and see. It's probably going to take about a year and a half to play all this out. So, George, I like this contrast between Meta and Apple, though, because Apple didn't scale up hiring to the degree a lot of these other technology companies did. So Meta's cutting 21,000 uh, people, and Apple's not doing anything nearly of that scale. They're just delaying some bonuses. How much, potentially, has Meta hobbled itself here? Zuckerberg, in this note, essentially said we got too bloated, we had too much middle management, our ratio of engineers to non-engineers was off. Is it as simple as letting go of some people and then it's running like a well-oiled machine? Probably not. It's probably more complicated than that, but I think the market is really saluting that he's showing some humility and showing that he got way too aggressive and way too arrogant in terms of what their prospects were on on visionary projects that are gonna take 10, 15, 20 years to play out and they're getting back to running a business. And that's why you see the stock do so well. When it had its first big bump and, and went up over 25% on earnings recently, I tried to talk to my senior research team about maybe trimming back a little bit because it was such a big move. And they gave me a big raspberry and said, no, we're gonna hold the stock because it's still so cheap and we need, we need to give it longer time to perform. And today validates that. This stock's got more potential. It's still not expensive at all. Just sticking with the labor theme here, what we saw with Uber and Lyft and the fact that the California legislation that would have reclassified workers um, was struck down as unconstitutional. Is that a tailwind for companies, some of these other companies like Uber and Lyft and, and the like that, that focus on contract workers as well? Yeah, it might be. I, I think it really depends on how those companies are run. I, I, we're much more constructive on Uber than we are Lyft. We think Uber's reached a point where it could really maximize its its uh, margins and cash flow going forward, and they've got a much more robust, stronger, bigger business. We're, we're concerned about Lyft. I've, I've shorted some put options on Lyft, but well below where it's trading at right now, and I think the jury's still out on that as a business. But it's obviously good news for both of those companies. Okay. George, thank you. Thanks for joining us.